Hi guys, here we are. We are ready to start book two of The Tale of Despero. It's entitled Chiara Roscuro. It's an Italian word that um, describes a way of painting where there's light and dark in the same picture, darkness and light next to each other. It's an interesting way to play into our theme of light versus dark, good versus evil. Chapter 16, Blinded by the Light. As our story continues, reader, we must go backwards in time to the birth of a rat, a rat named Chiara Roscuro and called Roscuro, a rat born into the filth and the darkness of the dungeon several years before the mouse Despero was born upstairs in the light. So fix your mind, this is now going back in time before Despero was even born. So this is going to give us some background knowledge that builds up to the birth of Despero. Reader, do you know the definition of the word Chiara Roscuro? If you look in the dictionary, you will find that it means the arrangement of light and dark, darkness and light together. Rats do not care for dark. I'm sorry, rats do not care for the light. Roscuro's parents were having a bit of fun when they named their son. Rats have a sense of humor. Rats, in fact, think that life is very funny. And they are right, reader. They are right. In the case of Chiara Roscuro, however, the joke had a hint of prophecy to it. You need a custodian to the nurse's office. A custodian to the nurse's office, please. Thank okay. you. Okay. Still at school. It had a hint of prophecy to it, which meant it was telling the future. So the sentence again is, in the case of Chiara Roscuro, however, the joke had a hint of prophecy to it. It was telling the future. For it happened that when Roscuro was a very young rat, he came upon a great length of rope on the dungeon floor. Ah, what have we here? said Roscuro. Being a rat, he immediately began to nibble on the rope. Stop that! boomed a voice and a great hand came out of the darkness and picked the rat up by his tail and held him suspended upside down. Were you nibbling on Gregory's rope, rat? Who wants to know, said Roscuro, for even upside down, he was a rat. You smart aleck, you rat, you smart aleck, you rat, nib, nib, nibbling on Gregory's rope. Gregory will teach you to mess with his rope. And keeping Roscuro hanging upside down, Gregory lit a match with the nail of his thumb. Psst. What would that be? What type of figurative language is that sound? Psst. Ah, that's right. Onomatopoeia. And then held the brilliant flame right in Roscuro's face. Ah, said Roscuro. He pulled his head back away from the light. But alas, he did not close his eyes, and the flame exploded around him and danced inside of him. So light dancing inside of you is what type of figurative language? That's right, personification, where we give human traits to non-human things. Has no one told you the rules, said Gregory. What rules? Gregory's rope rat is off limits. So, apologize for chewing on Gregory's rope. I will not, said Roscuro. Apologize. No. Filthy rat, said Gregory. You black souled thing. Gregory has had it with you rats. He held the match closer to Roscuro's face and a terrible smell of burnt whiskers rose up around the jailer and the rat. And then the match went out and Greg Gregory released Roscuro's tail. He flung him back into the darkness. Do not ever touch Gregory's rope again, or you will be sorry. Roscuro sat on the dungeon floor. The whiskers on his left side of his face were gone. His heart was beating hard. And though the light from the match had disappeared, it danced still before the rat's eyes, even when he closed them. Personification. Light, he said aloud, and then he whispered the word again, light. 
From that moment forward, Roscuro showed an abnormal, inordinate interest in illumination of all sorts. Illumination is light. He was always, in the darkness of the dungeon, on the lookout for the light, the smallest glimmer, the tiniest shimmer. His rat so longed inexplicably, inexplicably for it, he began to think that light was the only thing that gave life meaning and he despaired that there was so little of it to be had. He finally voiced this sentiment to his friend, a very old, one-eared rat named Botticelli Rimorso. Now, Rimorso reminds me, or it comes from the word remorse, which means sorrow. Hmm. Tells me a little bit about this character. Does it sound like a light or a dark character to you? Yeah. Me too. I think it's a dark character, Botticelli. I think, said Roscuro, that the meaning of life is light. Light, said Botticelli. Ha, 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 you kill me. Light has nothing to do with it. What does it all mean then, asked Roscuro. The meaning of life, said Botticelli, is suffering. Specifically, the suffering of others. Prisoners, for instance. Reducing a prisoner to weeping and wailing and begging is a delightful way to invest your existence with meaning. As he spoke, Botticelli swung from the end of an extraordinarily long nail of his right front paw a heart-shaped locket. He had taken the locket from a prisoner and hung it on a thin braided rope. Whenever Botticelli spoke, the locket moved. Back and forth, back and forth it swung. Are you listening? said Botticelli to Remorso. What do you know about being hypnotized? Have you seen that before where they wave something in front of you? Watch this, watch the moving thing back and forth. You are feeling sleepy. Is that what Botticelli is up to? Are you listening? Botticelli said to Roscuro, I am listening. Good, said Botticelli. Do as I say and your life will forever be full of meaning. This is how to torture a prisoner. First, you must convince him that you are his friend. Listen to him. Encourage him to confess his sins. And when the time is right, talk to him. Tell him what he wants to hear. Tell him, for instance, that you forgive him. This is a wonderful joke to play on a prisoner, to promise forgiveness. Why, said Roscuro. His eyes went back and forth, back and forth, following the locket. Because, said Botticelli, you will, you will promise it. <laughs> You will not grant it. You will gain his trust, and then you will deny him. You refuse to offer the very thing he wants. Forgiveness, freedom, friendship, whatever his heart most desires, you withhold. At this point in his lecture, Botticelli laughed so hard that he had to sit down and catch his breath. The locket swayed slowly back and forth and then stopped altogether. Ha! said Botticelli. <laughs> you gain his trust. You refuse him. And <laughs> you become what he knew you were all along. What you knew you were all along. Not a friend. Not a confessor. Not a forgiver. But <laughs> a rat. You are a rat. Botticelli wiped his eyes and shook his head and sighed a sigh of great contentment. <sighs> then he set the locket in motion again. At this point, it is most effective to run back and forth over the prisoner's feet, inducing physical terror, along with the emotional sort. Oh, he said, it is such a lovely game, such a lovely game, and it is just absolutely chock full of meaning. So what Botticelli just 
said is not only do you tear the pers- the prisoner down psychologically, right? You tell him that your friend that your friends, you can trust me, tell me anything. And they do. And they're like, "Do you forgive me, friend?" And you're like, "No. I don't forgive you, and I'm not your friend. I'm a rat." Ha ha ha. And then, after all that's done, you know what Botticelli wants you to do? Run all over the human prisoner with your little rat feet. Scribble, scrabble, scribble, scrabble. Terrifying, that prisoner. What a dark dude. I would very much like to torture a prisoner, said Roscuro. I would like someone. I would like to make someone suffer. Your time will come, said Botticelli. Currently, all the prisoners are spoken for. But another prisoner will arrive sooner or later. How do I know this to be true? Because, Roscuro, thankfully, there is evil in the world. And the presence of evil guarantees the existence of prisoners. So soon there will be a prisoner for me? Yes, said Botticelli Remorso. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. You are looking forward to it. You are looking forward to it because you are a rat, a real rat. Yes, said Roscuro. I am a real rat. Hang on. The cleanup is needed on the stage in the cafeteria. The cleanup is needed on the stage in the cafeteria. Thank you. Yes, said Roscuro, I am a rat. He's hypnotized. Concerned not at all with the light, said Botticelli. Concerned not at all with the light, said Roscuro. Botticelli laughed again and shook his head. The locket, suspended from the long nail on his paw, swung back and forth, back and forth. You, my young friend, are a rat. Exactly. Yes. Evil. Prisoners, rats, suffering. It all fits together so neatly, so sweetly. Oh, it is a lovely world. A lovely, dark world. Ooh, shivers. Chapter 17, Small Comforts. Not long after the conversation between Botticelli and uh, Roscuro, a prisoner did arrive. The dungeon door slammed, and two rats watched as a man uh, watched a man being led by the king's soldier down the stairs and into the dungeon. Excellent, whispered Botticelli. This one is yours. Roscuro looked at the man closely. I will make him suffer, he said. But as he stared up at the man, the door to the dungeon was suddenly flung open, and a thick and brilliant shaft of afternoon light cut mm. into the dark of the dungeon. Ugh, said Botticelli, and he covered his eyes with his paw. Roscuro, however, stared directly into the light. Reader, this is important. The rat called Chiara Roscuro did not look away. He let the light from the upstairs world enter and fill him. Personification. He gasped aloud with the wonder of it. Give him his small comforts, shouted a voice at the top of the stairs, and a red cloth was thrown into the light. The cloth hung suspended for a moment, bright red and glowing, and then the door was slammed shut again, and the light disappeared, and the cloth fell to the floor. It was Gregory the jailer who bent to pick it up. All right, so now the prisoners are down there, and Gregory is kind of the boss. He's the prison guard. He bent to pick it up. Go on, said the old man as he held the cloth out to the prisoner. Take it. You will need every last bit of warmth down here. And so the prisoner took the cloth and draped it around his shoulders as if it were a cloak. And the soldier of the king said, Right then, Gregory, he's all yours. And the soldier turned around and went back up the steps and opened the door to the outside world, and a, some small light leaked in before the door closed behind him. Did you see that? Roscuro said to Botticelli. Hideously ugly, said Botticelli. Ridiculous. 
What can they possibly mean by letting all of that light in at once? Don't they know that this is a dungeon? It was beautiful, said Roscuro. No, said Botticelli, no. He looked at Roscuro intently. Not beautiful, no. I must see more light. I must see all of it, said Roscuro. I must go upstairs. Botticelli sighed. Who cares about the light? Your obsession with it is tiresome. Listen, we are rats. We do not like the light. We are about darkness. We are about suffering. But, Roscuro said, upstairs. No buts, said Botticelli. No buts. None, none. Rats do not go upstairs. Upstairs is the domain of mice. He took the locket from around his neck. What, he said, swinging it back and forth, is this rope made of? Whiskers. The whiskers of whom? Mice. Exactly. And who lives upstairs? Mice. Exactly. Mice. Botticelli turned his head and spat on the floor. Pooh! Mice are nothing but little packages of blood and bones, afraid of everything. They are despicable, laughable, the opposite of everything we strive to be. Do you want to live in their world? Roscuro looked up past Botticelli to the delicious sliver of light that shone out from beneath the door and said nothing. Listen, said Botticelli, this is what you should do. You should go torture the prisoner. Go and take the red cloth from him. The cloth will satisfy your cravings for something from that world. But do not go up into that light. You will regret it. As he spoke, the locket swung back and forth. Benary, back come to and the forth. Benary, come to the you do not belong in that world. You are a rat. A rat. Say it with me. A rat, said Roscuro. Ah, oh, but you are cheating, said Botticelli. You must say, I am a rat, smiling his low smile at Roscuro. I am a rat, said Roscuro. Again, said Botticelli, swinging his locket. I am a rat, said Roscuro. Exactly, said Botticelli. A rat is a rat is a rat. End of story. World without end. Amen. Yes, said Roscuro. Amen. I am a rat. He closed his eyes. He saw again the red cloth spinning against the backdrop of gold. And he told himself, reader, that it was the cloth that he desired and not the light. Those are our two chapters from today, Monday. And so if you need to catch up, there you go. Um, we will read some more tomorrow. So Roscuro just made a very real choice in his life. Instead of pursuing his dreams, his desire for light and good, he decided to opt for the dungeon and the dark and the evils that await down there. But what I do know about Chiara Roscuro is that he's filled with light and darkness. Which one will prevail? Which one will win out? Let's tune in tomorrow and find out. Good night, you guys. See you in the morning.